<coughs> hey guys, this is uh, Sudi from uh, SV Labs uh, channel. Now, uh, this uh, today we are we are we are trying to focus on creating vegetation for Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so this this part of the video, uh, I'll be uh, mostly focusing on. Uh, Bringing into uh, into 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 ZBrush a, a photogrammetry scan from Mega Scans, uh, then uh, retouching it, polishing it, uh, you know, delighting uh, it in Substance Designer, and then bring the whole thing into uh, into the the game engine. So uh, so let's get started. So first of all, I'll just uh, give you a base background of what you are seeing right here. So this is a small level I made in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, so this includes a small uh, subway tunnel with with some walls across. I just did some temporary, you know, uh, vertex painting. So right now all the geometry, all the vegetation, all textures, everything is in the L1 stage of quality. That means um, just the next stage of uh, the placeholder. Um, so this all these walls are basically um, modular all these pieces of pieces of the roof are modular so all these are modular separate you can see separate pieces here all the walls are the same um, so when I go into the project when I further down maybe in L2 quality I'll be sculpting more details into it like you know broken bricks and some some kind of uh, uh, you know uh, damage here or you know a lot of g overgrowth with vines falling all over then maybe some one section of the wall has been broken off and there's water coming down like there is a lot of stuff I can do um, and this whole uh, ground of the, tra of the tracks will be covered with water I will show you what I, wha what I mean, mean by that so I found this uh, idea uh, on uh, from a concept from art station I'll show you the concept. So this is the what I'm talking about. So this concept has has a lot of elements which uh, which I just showed you with the with the, with the train engine like which has been like a lot of uh, rust and uh, still there is a uh, still paint left and you know water drain marks. Um, then this is a passenger car. Then there's another passenger car down here like which has been burned. Um, so there there will be a lot of uh, uh, this 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 part of the tunnel will be covered with metal sheets and signs and you know wires and dirt and you know wines going all over the place plus up some hanging lights the look at the roof the roof is like almost like gone you can see a lot of lights light beams coming in uh, with a lot of vegetation on it uh, like wines and then there's a part of a tree or a shrub there are trees growing all over the uh, around this uh, uh, survey and, and and you can see all the buildings are broken like the, 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 at the at the horizon this has this has mostly like a last of us uh, last of us kind of theme which is like everything is broken everything is like damaged and derelict and you can see uh, there's a lot of scope for sculpting here into the broken platform pieces coming off uh, like uh, nothing is clean like everything has got its own damage so the te texture wise uh, I made a small um, plan here for the whole scene uh, which has like the uh, uh, there'll be some some of trees surrounding the roof then these will also be uh, metallic so I plan to do it uh, with a kind of bluish tone with uh, with with rust flows on it uh, so this is rusty metal so uh, so this is just a temporary placeholder texture right now so this is like 2040 by 2040 it'll be cutting down uh, to 1024 depending, depending on the performance because it's just a small level I don't plan to uh, have any gameplay in it but the player will be able to walk around this place only this place you can't go here it's all blocked then there is some bushes uh, I need to make in terms of vegetation then there are vines then the major part is the bricks 
I will be using the same bricks all over the place with a lot of vertex painting on it. Then there are some signs going on. Then the, then the train. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So, in terms of the uh, quality I'm looking for, so I made a small mood board here with this kind of accent colors, all going from green to uh, going to uh, warm uh, brownish tint, then going all the way to slight blue. So that is all the uh, all the colors in the scene. Plus, uh, so I got some references from Pinterest and Google, which are really good good websites for getting references for your mood board. So this kind of uh, you know this see this glow here. So that is the bloom effect I want to achieve once I finish the scene. Can if you if you look carefully, you can see the bloom effect here from the sky. So sky is really bright compared to the whole scene, like uh, some light shafts coming down, uh, and then they are, they have really nice. Uh, specular you know uh, hits on the floor so like you also have some nice specular hits on the train uh, some specific hits on the wall edges here I uh, see this uh, nice metal met, 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 metal tubes which are, which are really um, like embedded into the uh, in, in, in the moss and the the, the dirt then you also see some vegetation here like light light passing through them um, i really like this one uh, because of the colors it is it is showing in so some some blue hues uh coming from the light these are nice examples of light shaft also i got some quality benchmarks here so this is from god of war uh, which is a game i really love to uh, take a look at the screenshots it's so good it's a it's a beautifully you know uh, sculpted um, there's some kind of cave room so with a lot of rocks and all Th this kind of lighting I uh, I want I, I would like to achieve I like nice uh, colors all around the the the, the interior with, with a little bit of warm hue here and there uh, that's kind of appearance here yeah. so these are all target references quality quality target so this is like some something I want to achieve. Then, uh, if you look at some of the uh, other stuff in the concept, so I just I just quickly made a uh, made uh, some some trees in it. So this is where this, this is where I where I plan to bring in a a, a tree uh, with its roots coming all the way down here. Uh, there is no clear idea about uh, how I'm going to do it right now, but I made a rough concept about the the plan I have in mind so I just brought a tree this is a tree I found online um, then I just added in for just just uh, retouching Photoshop just added these roots into it then just give some shadows so the roots won't be this big depending on what kind of scan I can get uh, then then this tree won't be uh, green because it is really close to this uh, burned tree so it will be mostly dead tree with some kind of burn marks on it so the, so the, like the, there was a fire recently and vegetation was growing over it that's the plan <coughs> then about the tree so this is the kind of uh, look I want to achieve for the tree so the roots can be kind of uh, uh, very closely hugging the, the wall whatever wall it is plus the root can, can go all the way down and uh, like this like flowing water it may not be this big could be somewhat close yeah that's a tree i found for the for the concept yeah uh, now let's uh, jump right in um, so that is a rough idea about uh, uh, about the rubbles and the the the, the density of vegetation around, it, around the train so this kind of a metal plus this vegetation will, will look really good uh, from the you know from the perspective of the player uh, at the on the at the tracks level you can see a rubble here plus some plants plus all the garbage on the top plus the train with uh, you know abandoned train with a lot of vegetation close to it because vegetation will usually grow under it and really close to the body where the train is not moving because people will be walking around it yeah so that is the plan so let's jump right in so i found a a very nice tree in uh, when I just browse mega scans, so the filters are like 3D assets tree stump. 
So if you go all the way down, scroll down, just keep scrolling down. You can see some stumps which I cannot use uh, use here because I need uh, a really good detailed roots. Uh, so scrolling down, all the way down. You see. So I like this the, this one. It is called tree stump. So if you zoom zoom into it, it got a, got this really nice. Uh, Got really nice root flow like you can see the roots coming out from here and it curves down so all the roots are like going down going around it going like this so this kind of flow i can really utilize uh in, in, a, in a in a 3d modeling software just to bring up bring the uh, final uh, look i want also also the texture of the, of the bark looks looks fine really close to what we have in the concept so it is like very smooth and it got this nice normal details on it and um, yeah that's uh, uh, that's a really nice uh, nice way to go so if you look at the concept back again so that's a tree I'm going for so the roots could be could be just I just, I just show you the screenshot so what I'm what I'm planning is so from from here to here from here to here I'll use the tree just as it is from the scan there won't be any change but in the scan the roots are like going like this sideways right like this sideways so what I can do is once I finish um, processing the scan and um, and baking it inside substance designer I can bring the tree uh, lower resolution tree back into max and just just this section I can bend them down like whichever way I want so only half of the tree is needed the, the, the rest I can just leave as, leave as it is because because uh, no one will see it because that will be behind the tracks anyways I mean sorry behind the wall so the, the, the wall is right here so the tree could be somewhere around uh, around this place it could be somewhere around here like this so this is what i'm just planning about and then have the roots uh, coming down like this you know like this or like this could be it could it could, could it could have like it could be going anyways like there are million there are millions of possibilities i need to try it out first so that so that could be the so that could be the that could be how the tree can be uh, and when you look at the look from the players players angle like uh, from from here you could see the tree like um, how will I define it so it will be like this going across and there's with the roots coming down all the way down with, with whatever length I have I need to um, I need to find out new new ways to make it look good Maybe like that and spawn root like going like this. Maybe can can be like any number of millions of possibilities. Somewhere like that. To be going up. So like that. So that is my whole idea. So how will I achieve this? Uh, so first of all, I need to uh, import this tree into ZBrush. So let's open ZBrush here. So right now it is a. Let um, me empty document so um, when you download from from mega scans uh, they give an option to download um, the mesh so go to settings here so go to the highest go to the highest re highest resolution possible like if it is like they have 2k 4k and 8k so I'm choosing 8k because you need really really high resolution uh, uh, color map or you can say high resolution albedo whatever uh, highest resolution you can get now go to settings you can see fpx make a uh, from from uh, from the source mesh uh, or obj or whatever you want so in the metahumans category choose u asset plus source asset because i want source asset okay uh, and if you scroll down source asset extras a high poly source source z tool and brushes so I'm, I'm i'm just going to check check all of them and just hit um hit download okay so once i download it 
what I'm going to get is mm, let me find that file sorry um, so I saved everything into texture folder under vegetation uh, trees uh, tree stump so that is uh, that, that, that that's all the files I got from the download so here I got a, a high resolution albedo so this one is like that uh, let's see how what size it is so go to file file information and you get ab about uh, 8k by 8k that is that is pretty good I would like to have about uh, 16k uh, because once I uh, once I process this uh, the scan I'll be using this uh, as the as the, the as a base texture to uh, to bake the color map from so if it is if it is big as big as it is better so if you if you zoom into it you can see a little bit, a, a little bit of uh, a distortion because uh, because the pixels are getting blurred out because it is maximum is 8, 8k here so i would like to have more than this but that's all we have uh then if we go to the next this is the uh, displacement i don't need that much normals i don't need that because i'll be baking it sep separately uh then roughness i don't need that all of these um so this this brush i could use this for detailing in zbrush for get some some extra next step details but it it depends on if i want to do it or not um so let's, let's go back here then there is a uh, Z tool, uh, so that is like about 87. Let me see, I said wood tree, and I don't know what that is. Yeah, I think that, that that's a that's tool we are we are going to download. Okay, let's go to ZBrush, and let's uh, load the tool. So I will go to my project folder, um, content, texture, vegetation trees tree stump so that that's a tool z tool so i'm just going to load it and when i drag it in can see a really nice uh, high resolution model i got here so this is straight from mega scans uh that is pretty good so i just need the uh, nice details on normal so if you really zoom in you can see there's a bit of distortion when i go really zoom in because the 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 mesh is only about uh, how big is it? Let me check. Let me check the. Let me check how, how big it is. Content, uh, textures, vegetation, trees, tree stump. So this one is zero is about about. 87.3 megabytes that's it so it is not that big also if you look at this uh, this is got about 7.5 million polys so i would say it is good uh, it's, it's good for this purpose um because one one more thing is that so from the player's viewpoint the the tree is up there so the player is not going not ever going to reach there so even if you look the tree from here like from really close up uh, you won't see much details uh, you, like I, uh, because it's uh, very high up there so that is but if the tree is close here somewhere like you might need more come um, the more resolution but but mega scans always gives that brush you can maybe you can just try sculpting some extra details on it if you want okay so here i will just switch the uh, material to matcap gray because that that gives me more nice definition the tree and i just set up a, a a custom toolbar here so i'll be saving this project as uh, a ball tree dot zero one me underscore zero one i'll just save it that is saved now we need a texture for this so we just get the texture for from uh, the one we downloaded so import texture so that is the wood tree color map just 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 open it uh there is a problem with this texture because this te texture has to be inverted um uh, flip by so I, yeah it has to be flipped so i'll show you what i mean so with it texture map but if i assign it right now 
I'll wait for it. See, just like it is totally upside down. So how can I fix it? Go to texture. Okay, again, select this texture here, and just flip Y. So it flipped. Now, now reapply. Wait for it. Now it's now it's fine. Now it's perfect. Now, how do you check the uh, texture quality? So right now, this uh, this tree has, I mean, this material has lighting on it. So if I change this to a flat color, you can see uh, this one is like really, really showing off that details on it. Now if I zoom in, you can see some some places that are blurry. So, so this part is good. This part is good. This part is good. But this part is like not good. Uh, so, so at this stage, we can't do anything because it is a baked texture into the, the texture is already baked into the model so we cannot change anything so that is the problem with mega scans now if you if you go out with a with a with a, with a good dslr camera and if you can take some um, if you can ca uh, capture your own photogrammetry uh, as assets that is the best thing to do okay so now what i'm going to do is uh I'll be. Uh, I don't need this, this, this soil here on the terrain. So I'll be removing them using a um, using a mask. Then, then in, invert the mask. Then delete the mesh wherever I don't need it. So before doing that, I need to go go to subtool, make a copy of this, duplicate the subtool. Then just rename it to. I'll be playing tree uh, underscore um, scout underscore maybe zero one. So zero one is on or, uh, uh, original. Okay. So just keep keep these as um, as a just 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 in case anything happens to the file, I need to have a backup. So I'm just going to save the file. So always keep saving it. Never forget to save. Okay. So after saving it, I'm just going to duplicate again. So this is for uh, a tree sculpt. Um, so mask. We can mask it. So how will I apply mask? So just first, first, first of all, find out which part you need and which part you don't need. So for this tree, I'm going to keep it like uh, if you look at it sideways, like press shift and 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 um, and you and left mouse button, you can see the tree has a pretty good detailed base. So this is what we need. So I'm not going to uh, do to cut anything off because you usually what we do is we actually mask the base like this. Okay. Um, okay, mask like this, and you can see there's a flat line below. So I can I can directly crop it off, but I'm losing all these small fine fine details on the on the roots, which I could use to get. Uh, I'll show you this kind of an effect. So it's kind of a small uh, roots branching off the 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 main ones, like uh, be somewhat like this. So so if you see if you look at this branches, uh, I mean this root has a main main root can see some nice smaller ones branching off so that so that's what what will happen if i delete this like there'll be a big big chunk of this going off right so i don't want to do that so i just want to keep the, those 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 roots intact at the at the edge so i can manipulate those roots in 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 3ds max uh, when i convert this into a low 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 poly so remove that mask now i'm just going to going in and manually going to uh, crop this part off so for some time I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to uh, do this I'm, I'm gonna come back I'll just uh, uh, for the entire process
Okay, so here I have a, I have a mask selection uh, of face section of the the base. So what I will do is first I will just um, invert the mask. So control left click mask inverted. So just the uh, unmasked portion. What I'll do is I'll go to geometry and just uh, go to um, visibility hide hide point. So that will be hidden. Okay. So that part of geometry is now and now hidden. Now I'll now I'll I can go to geometry. Then we'll modify topology and we'll delete hidden. Okay. I think now now it should work. Yeah. So uh, <coughs> let me check the mesh level right now. It's fine. I don't know why Zidus was showing me that error message. Maybe people with more Zidus knowledge can help me out. Okay. So this one. So I have done uh, some part of the removal process. I had to do the whole thing for the entire trunk. There is some more part left so, so, so I'll be doing it while I won't be talking anything so I, I, I'll come back after that Okay, so right now we have a um, the tree with most of the noise removed uh, for the soil. I mean, so sorry, I mean the soil removed, and uh, we got a nice uh, base for the roots. We we'll use some of these uh, for our project, not the entire tree, but if you look at sideways, uh, you can see all these roots that are coming down. I can actually bend this inside a. Uh, 3d software like max 3d studio max just just from this portion so keep this as, uh, as a top in the top ground and this portion i can actually bend down i cannot do it on the high poly but i can do it on the low low resolution mesh because we only need we only need this much for the entire tree so the half that, that, that was a wrong example so here so this part again just delete totally delete because I don't need that need that because you only see the front half of the tree inside the game so uh, so that's the plan for this so the next part is to uh, go into the sub tool again and I'm just going to make a copy of this just to keep it safe um, I just rename it as mask cleanup so uh, so by cleanup I mean you can see those this kind of um, remaining geometry here and there like small pieces of mesh which I don't need this could have this could make a lot of problems when I'm uh, when I'm baking it in designer so what I will do is first I will uh, convert this into uh, into poly groups so I'll just go to the polyframe fill. So it can, because it can give me a, a depiction with with color, and go down all the way to polygroups. Uh, I just use uh, use auto groups for now. So it's doing it now. I think it's already done. Now, if I pre press Control Shift and left click on the mesh here. Uh, it'll actually hide all the you know small bits of geometry which was lying around so now it's clean turn off the polyframe i can go into again go back into geometry 
modified topology delete heater. So now the tree is, uh, tree is very clean. I'll show you what I mean. If I go into the, the, the previous version masked, you can see a lot of uh, impurities. So those things I don't need. Also if you zoom in here, you can see small bits of uh, geometry. See these ones? So we remove them by polygroup and just uh, removing uh, the press, uh, pr uh, pr uh, pr pressing control shift and clicking on the geometry you want to keep. So that is pretty much uh, inside ZBrush. Uh, just save the project once more just to keep it safe. Now go back into there's a little bit of cleaning left. Uh, so what I mean is go to, to Macrab Gray. Now if you go into the side view, um, you see a lot of the, there's a lot of stuff in the in the trunk which we cannot use. So the top, <coughs> so sorry, the top part of the trunk, like when they uh, when when Mega Scans actually scanned it, um, they only scanned the bottom part of the trunk and 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 some some remaining parts of the geom geometry with a lot of impurity like noises. We, we cannot use it because it, it will pose a lot of problems when I uh, uh, try to tile it for the whole whole trunk right so I can use I can use this portion that is fine but the top I can I cannot so the best way to remove that is uh, to find the best angle which you can go for maybe like uh, Okay, this right here. Yeah, right here. And just I'm just going to press Control and just drag it like this, making it a flat top, uh, which I can remove. Now in invert uh, to visibility height points. So that so the top top part is gone. You can go back to geometry, modify topology, and delete here. There is now a clean clean mesh, uh, so there is no uh, no uh, ground with it. Uh, the clean just the roots and the treetop, which this part I can use to tile. Uh, that's a long long process, uh, but I will show you step by step how to do that. So uh, next thing we are going to do is I'll just save it. So solve, always save the project. So never ever go without saving you can lose a precious amount of data okay now I'll just move this geometry to another level in in, in sub tool just like layers uh, make a duplicate copy of it and rename it so I'll rename this to mm, decimate decimate zero one because I'll be I'll be making multiple copies of it just to keep it um, more organized and I can always go back to the previous level like if I if I have something wrong with this I can always go back to uh, this one mask one so if the decimation looks a bit noisy or if I don't like it I can always go back to the mask cleanup level also that's why I'm keeping it there now uh, next step is to is to um, make try and make a low poly out of this low poly I mean not the low poly which you can use in a game but a low poly mesh which you can use to unwrap and bake um, bake a good amount of textures from it I mean good quality textures from it so for the first step I'll just uh, use the de de decimation master so in this uh, I'll just use the default settings I'm not, I'm, I'm not changing anything now go to pre-process current so it's processing it because it is not a heavy mesh so it'll get over fast so once I hit decimate current it will lose the te te texture because the UVs are gone but that is fine so that is the first level of decimation if we go to polyframe you can see uh, it's getting better now so again pre-process so I may have to do this about a couple of times. Decimate current. 
so just take a look at the roots. Uh, I don't want to lose any details on it. Keep a watch on the roots. And again, pre process by 20. This mid current. So it is going to be somewhat okay. So, so at this stage, uh, I will keep this as a backup and then again duplicate decimate uh, 2 is fine it's fine let's make it save it file's a bit heavy now Okay, now what I'll do is I'll uh, smoothen some of the noises because they, uh, they can actually save some time for me uh, later on. So go to go to smooth sm uh, smoothness and intensity already is down to about uh, three. Uh, let me let me let me see how how good that is. When I try, yeah, three is good. So what I'm trying to do here is uh, I'm trying to make. Uh, the noise is uh, less obvious so you can, you can just hide the polyframe because it will give you a better result by looking at the screen like this so smooth like smoothen out like whatever you feel like it is too sharp or too noisy in the, in the geometry and make it uh, less obvious So uh, it's kind of relaxing the uh, the geometry a little bit to get a more smoother result. That is pretty good. Okay, so we got a uh, decimated mesh slightly uh, smoothened up, manually smoothing it. Uh, you could use you could, you you could use the. Uh, auto smoothing inside uh, using other uh, zbrush functions if you know it uh, I'm not going to do that right now because uh, I'm mainly focusing on doing it manually so if we go to polyframe again uh, it is much less noisy right now so uh, it was very noisy before so I think it's a good time to go into remesh so this one again I'll keep as a one level of uh, sub tool and then duplicate it this is the decimate duplicate it and rename it as uh, I'll rename it as masked uh, remesh remesh zero one so remesh is basically it will it will convert all the triangles into editable uh, four sided polygons wherever possible so just save it again once more then we'll go into remesh so let me wait till the program saves it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is go into geometry, mm, then Z remesher. Uh, let's keep the poly count at five, uh, or, or, you, or you can even do it as half. Half is good. Half is a good uh, good count. Uh, so keeping everything as 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 default, uh, I'll hit on Z remesher. Okay, so now I got a really nice uh, four-sided polygons. Th there could be some some triangles in between, but that is perfectly fine. Uh, again, I can go in and just smoothen out all these uh, minor inconsistencies, wherever you find it, like a bit of a 
problem here so just make it like loosening it up try to get the maximum amount of uh, details as possible without losing much of the triangles Anyway, we'll be doing a heavy, uh, heavy rework in Introduce Max, just to fix the problems in the mesh once we take it into the Max for baking, because unwrapping needs a very clean geometry, uh, otherwise it won't work. I need clean, uh, clean rings and clean loops, otherwise it'll be a big, big pain. Uh, okay, let me smooth it up. So this is level one of uh, remesh. So I'll be going into maybe level 2 or level 3 just to get the best out of it. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. Now let's try again going to sub 2, duplicate. So this one is actually named as uh, Premier Silver 2, that's fine. Um, again going to geometry, um, half of this. Zero measure. Let's let's try what brings out. Uh, just the other one is switched on to. Okay, so that one is okay, but if you still look at the rings here, this might work. But there's a small problem area here, because what I mean is, I need. Oh, come on. Yeah, I need these lines as straight as possible. Like. Um, So these lines have to be like very clean. So the num numbers also have to be like here. Here is perfect. Here is perfect. Like if you count like count that up to here. So so this is this 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 could be the cutoff where I will be separating the top of the trunk and the and, and the roots. The roots will mostly will be uh, unique uh, unwrap. And starting from here, from here it will be. Tileable. So, um, if you look at this one right to here, uh, in this short is okay. So, if I turn camera, if you look right here, there's a problem spot. So, this I could fix it manually inside Max, like reconnecting these two, and our and just de deleting this uh, this loop, loop. I could fix that problem. But let me try to remesh it once more. A half of this. If I don't lose any details, like we can call it uh, as a final geometry for our unwrapping. Mm. Let me try try once more. Uh, geometry remesh at half. Oh yeah, yeah, that's good. So that removed that problem here, and I have a, I have a really good mesh now. Okay, so what we'll do is, uh, let me check once more, yeah it's good. Also check check that uh, any loop is going like a spring, like what I mean is, like a spiral. If it goes from here all the way around and go like, go like a spiral up, that won't work. Because it will it'll, it'll, it'll need a lot of uh, secondary work in 3ds Max or Maya, whichever software package you, you choose to uh, uh, to model it in low poly uh, it'll be a, a big big hassle to fix it so check the top loop here uh, all the way around has to be just one second one keep eye on the second one it has to be single loop the third one yeah it is single loop so let's try here so fix your eye here and check for that loop if it is one it is one so 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 we are good so this is how you d how you d determine if the if the mesh is good for sculpting i mean this is good for baking now what we'll do is i just want to make sure that this this uh, low poly geometry closely matches with the with the original uh, high definition mesh so what i'll do is uh, i'll make use of the, uh, the sub tool palette and unhide the one just above decimate this one 
clean up. If you look right now, the geometry is actually going inside. There's a lot of uh, loss. So, keeping this one selected, I'll turn off the polyframe and go into sculpting mode. So now I will actually my tab is a bit far far away from my keyboard okay so I'll use my um, tab to um, to bring this out so for the uh, just use a standard brush standard brush is fine uh, because I don't have any texture on it uh, so, so this stuff is very a low poly mesh so just use the add and uh, try and see if, if, if the size is good for the brush size so bring it out slightly and I need I think density can be around 10 uh, if it's too much I'll, uh, I'll reduce it yeah 10 is good so just manually sculpt it out this details uh, the reason being uh, I will lose a lot of details like if I don't do, do, do this because I had actually smoothened out a lot of geometry in the initial phase uh, after decimation. Uh, let me scout this out a little bit more here. Because since it's a low, low poly mesh, uh, it won't be that hard for you to do, do this process. Somewhat easy, not that hard. That is, uh, I think that is pretty much it. Um, let's hide the high poly and see how it is. So let's hide this. Yeah, see the details on it. So it was a bit kind of flat before, but now you got all the uh, details back. So I will use this uh, as the base for um, baking. Now next step is to. Uh, do a simple unwrap on this inside ZBrush so flattening flatten map uh, just go to polyframe uh, there is like a I had a UV sitting here somewhere okay UV master so open UV master and just use uh, unwrap just simple unwrap and just see flatten so it will give you a really nice uh, flattened version of the UVs so unflatten and export this as an obj save again save again so i have you seen like how many times i save so saving is very important so keep saving it so um, so i'll export this mesh as, as, an, as, as, as an obj into tree stump uh, i'll create a new folder called uh, Source meshes. Mm. So meshes to some stuff now. So this is uh, um, low source. So one. Same way I need to uh, export the high poly mesh. So find the one that is just above the decimation, uh, the master one, master one, okay, so don't, don't, don't forget it, uh, then just export it, export, let's name it a uh, high source, so BJ. save it, so ZBrush is writing it. 
So I just open Max. Just if, uh, just give me a few minutes. Okay, now I will just uh, import this model from the project folder. Um, content, textures, vegetation, trees, tree stump, mm -hmm. source meshes. So I just import uh, both of these high high poly and the low lowest. So I import the lowest first. first. So I need to find out the mesh scale for it here. So just keep the texture save for now. So that is a, that is like just going sideways. So I need to change the orientation. Uh, low flip Z Y axis import. Oh, it is perfect. Now it's perfectly on the grid. Everything is fine. Now we'll just uh, give it a name. Go to layers and the uh, side for now. Uh, mm, I'll name it. Uh, Low. We save the file. The same content folder. Naming is not that important for the max file. Uh, it can be anything uh, now I'll just import the uh, a high poly mesh so import high source because why I'm importing this is uh, once I uh, set the scene in max I have to have both the both both meshes overlap exactly now it brought the texture with it I don't know why but anyway it's, it's fine texture might look really bad here but but it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all uh, now this one is uh, just name this copy uh, paste this is uh, high to save the file now if I check the how much density it is 36 I just do this triangle and the selection and press 7 to bring it bring out the 36. So for the high poly mesh, now I am having around 742,000. It's just le less than 1 million. For low poly, it is. No, I'm not showing the. Okay, wait. Something is wrong. Selection. Okay, so for the low poly, it is 7,200, but that is okay. It is just for baking. And for the high poly mesh, it is 735,000. Less than a million, but that is very easy to manage. It's fine, but usually it will go around uh, 1 million or 2, 2 million triangles. But in this case, it's fine. Don't worry about the specularity, maybe you can just fix it because we'll be applying a standard material. So, right now, the material is uh, I think is an unknown. I'll change it to render setup, change this to scan line, and we have standard legacy shader so I apply this to everyone uh, sign that's fine yeah, because like we don't need that um, that many complex shader right, right now okay so next part is uh, is to start unwrapping this model so uh, I'll use a max default unwrapper because I don't need any special tools for it. So the first change is to here, here, here. editable poly and then the modifier list. Let's go to UV coin modifiers, unwrap UVW. And I'm going to UV editor. Okay. So I'll just keep it somewhere here. Just to have both uh, both views. Okay. 
So the best way, so 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 that is the that is the hundred hundred we had from from Zbrush, if you remember. So check the lines here. So loops are all going straight. So that is good, uh, except here, which has a little bit of problem. Um, so let me check where we are planning for it. So let's go into edge mode and just do an edge um, loop. Check the loop is going correctly. No, no, it's not. So it has to be a full circle. So if you check here, how is the loop? So that is also going uh, about downwards. So what about this one? If I select these two, I click on this. I think that's the perfect place to start the tiling from. So from here to the top, uh, it will be tiling. And from here to the bottom, it will be unique. So this section starts from here. So I'll just may I'll just break it, Control B. I so that is uh, that is where the break comes. The unique. So from here to here, you will see only custom. From here to here, you will see title work. That's uh, that's okay. That's perfectly fine. So we go to element mode. Just uh, move this element to the side. And the, 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 this is the custom custom part. So what I should do is I actually break it up into chunks. Um, this control B break it. Uh, find something like a nice uh, you know. Uh, piece I can easy, easily manage. Control B, screen Control B. Uh, this one I want it to be slightly different. So here, what I can do is. Here, this line, the chunk, move these chunks to some other unique part, unique part, unique, unique. Keep um, keep saving it because if something crashes, I'll have a good backup. Uh, no, eleven. Break. Even break from break this one. We keep it one off and break this one. Okay, now I have uh, all the pieces. Okay. Now what I'll do is I'll just uh, rescale elements just to make sure that everything is scaling properly. Rescale elements, yeah, that's fine now. Now just put the checker and checker pattern, texture checker, just to know the scales are fine. Looks like they are okay. Look at this square sizes; they all they all match. Now what I need to do is I need to make this into a tileable piece. So I need to straighten up all the loops. So I have customized a shortcut here for loops. What I should do is hotkey editor and under um, under UVW uh, for um, so align vertically. So I have have, have all to be. And align horizontally all C. So you can actually easily uh, add this to your customization hotkeys. So what I'll do is I'll just uh, select, go to move tool, select them one by one. Just just go to edge mode. Double click to select. Oh, element. You can to se se select and just press for this control C is horizontal. Do this for all the loops here. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make it into a straight uh, square pattern. So that'll be for, for each, uh, easy for me to uh, use as a terrible section.
Now we will do all the verticals. Um, control uh, Alt V. It's not there by default. You will have to customize it. This way, I don't have to go go into this this one for every each and every head, edge. So this is going to save a lot of time. have a perfectly uh, flat square UVs. So right now what I will do is uh, I'll move this to this section on the right hand side because this is where the, where the tiring part will start as per my plan. And for the unique pieces I'll move them to the side and just arrange them there. Try to squeeze in as much uh, space as you can because we need a lot of uh, we need the best uh, uh, resolution possible. So save the file. And move them to so this to this part. So left side I'm planning to uh, to use it as as the uh, tableable section. I mean sorry, uh, the the unique section. Uh, squeeze the parts as close to them as possible so sometimes the shapes may not be able may not let you squeeze squeeze in properly but try to your best find patterns like this like uh, you have you have a see a shape that goes in so find another shape that that has the somewhat the similar uh, part which you can squeeze in um, so this is a toil and error pass basically so you had to try out the different chunks and see which chunks goes where which which chunk mix but never rescale it never scale it like like this because you can you can lose or lose the resolution and make it not um, tile properly also sometimes you may have to break the chunk depending on the your needs so here I'm just breaking this because I find after breaking like it gives me much more easier results to arrange it here like, like somewhere like this for example oh this is not the final final unwrap i'll uh, once i scale uh, once i uh, see see how it looks inside the engine then i'll ever decide to keep it or not then i'll come back come back and modify it at, 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 at a later stage so try not to overlap so right now it's okay um, so now is the time to check if I can scale it. Okay, just bring everything in temporarily. Okay, now uh, this look, there's a bit of gap here. So select everything, scale it up. Um, so if you press Control, Control, Alt, and Scale, you can scale up everything uniformly. Um, let me see, try again. So, 
this one should be good. So if you look now, like uh, we lost a lot of space just by scaling it up. Let's rescale elements again. Okay, so now I need to scale it down. There's a problem with the scaling. Okay. So another technique I I, uh, I use just to match the UVs is use this as a guideline for for where you want to end the unique pieces. So here you can see three checks are like so three checks. Wait, I'll hide this like this. So this this extends up to one two three four uh, three four five five boxes. So I have about three boxes left here. It's like eight by eight. Uh, I have three boxes, so you can use the three three boxes to 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 arrange the unique unique part. Um, get down, get down into lightly. So bring it here. It's exactly three boxes, so you can go up to here. Two, three. Anyway, we'll be coming back to uh, to fix it, uh, fix any UV problems at, at, at a later stage. Because this is not the final unwrap. I just squeeze in as much as I can here. A little bit problematic. Let's try it this way. Now we got a good, uh, somewhat good unwrap. The pieces are all uh, similar size. Let's try and go for a big with this. Uh, save it. So I'll bring this tree into Unreal just for testing. So close this one up. Uh, and so I use a shortcut. So collapse the stack. Save it. So since we have the low poly, we can export this into uh, for testing. So I have made a button here. Export selected, selected to the project folder. So I'll use the same texture folder for the vegetation trees. Uh, Resum, I'll make a separate folder called substance. Substance and Mesh for big. This will be J. Tree big low. So this one, don't flip it, don't export material to library, turn it off. Uh, texture code. We need we need te texture coordinates. We need normals, smooth smooth groups. Keep scale as one, and export it. Same thing for the high poly. By the time we launch the substance designer, so we will have some different time. So for the high poly mesh, do the same thing. Suppose like did three big. Hi. Okay, so that is done. And now I'm going to open it in a designer. There's been a little bit of uh, problem with the. Are you talking to yourself? I'm recording my. Oh, crashed. 
Okay, now we just um, start a new package. Options graph. Uh, for this, um, I will keep the size to 4K by 4K. And you can just name it as tree um, bark 01. So keep it as metallic roughness. So everything else the same. You OK. Now I got a default uh, view of this. I'll just save the package. Save as vegetation, trees, tree stump, tree park is good, it's fine. So here is fine. Now I will uh, import some resources. So I'll just link it so I can just uh, keep the file size low. Uh, wait, I'll just first uh, give link 3D mesh. And then textures, same. Trees, tree stump. In this option, mesh for bake. Just import these two. So I got the mesh. Uh, now resources. I just link uh, textures. So I just need the color map. That's it. For textures, vegetation, trees, tree stump. I have this uh, this color map for the albedo from the from the from the asset we got from mega scans because we need that to pick the albedo. So others are not needed. So everything else we will just get it from the mesh. Save the package. So inside this here, uh, we just click on this tree, bake low, right click, and bake model information. So that will open this uh, uh, bake window. You have all the, the, the uh, this is the UVs uh, which we have seen earlier, which we unwrapped inside max so keep it as 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 is we'll be updating this l a lot uh, so we are going to select the uh, high definition mesh from resources tree big high then everything else is fine so uh, it, baker changed to 1496 default format uh, png is fine interlacing is fine by default uh, then change the texture save folder so we are going to save it into uh, tree stump then into substance folder because we can just keep everything organized so folder uh, these are all in oh, okay for now we have to check if it is okay it's fine and add bigger so add bigger first uh, I'll do no map from mesh so keep us keep keep it as direct X um, because Unreal, uh, we, can, we, can, we can always flip flip it to the green green channel if we need OpenGL. So keep directors for now. Add add Baker. So color map from mesh. Color map from mesh. Inside this, color source material color. Um, oh sorry, not not color map from mesh. That was my mistake. Um, so this one. Delete Baker, add Baker, transfer texture from mesh. So, so, so that's what we want. So under this, tiny space is fine, direct is fine, texture file. Choose file from resources. We have the albedo we want. Then we'll uh, bake and, and add an occlusion. Occlusion map from mesh, everything is fine. Uh, then we need a curvature map from mesh. So with that, all, 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 all of our necessary maps are done. Now save back the baking setup and let's hit on start render. Might take, might take some time, but sometimes it'll be fast. Okay, so I think we have some holes. So if you go to normal map, if you zoom in really close, no, you go to amino occlusion. Yeah, here map. Uh, if you go really close here, you can see a gray spot. So this gray spot is uh, is there because because of the frontal and rear value. Because it is it, it is not it, it is not uh, it is not getting all the high poly information. 
because we need to set these senses. So I think this is a real value. I'll change this to 0 0.05. Now let's bake again. I think this time it is good. Now once the render is done, uh, we will take a look. Now let's see the M occlusion. Now it has more details in it. Because it was, was grey earlier here. This is good. So all these are good. And look at the deepest uh, locations. If, it, if, if you have all the information then it is fine. Yeah, it looks fine. Okay, we'll keep this. Now I can just save baking setup, close it. Now bring slowly bring bring these maps into the graph view. I'll change the scene into a plane. Be fine. So three big normal normal map. Current normal map to normal. It looks fine. Now here, here, here is the problem. Here, uh, the numbers are like, like phasing outwards. That is because of the uh, Baker is now DirectX. So if you, if, if you want to change it, and just use a, a normal invert node. So this is just you can actually uh, invert green is there. True. So give it here. Shift move here. Then you can find that so all the crevices are going in. So now they are in the right position. Okay. Okay. So normal is here. Then we have the uh, color map. No, this is the what is this one? Yeah, transfer texture from mesh. So this is transfer texture from mesh. So you just baked in. So you can see the all the details. Like baking all the information. Now if you zoom zoom really in you can see noise, but that is perfectly fine for us. Then um, AO map, we'll keep it here for now. It's a very nice uh, AO big then curvature so we, so we so we can use curvature for some specific purpose uh, but keep it there for now but not immediately so color map here normal and inclusion so what we'll do next is i want to um, get more information from the from the m inclusion so because we need to remove a from the color map so what we'll do is I will use the uh, normal um, normal to height HQ uh, and uh, HBAO. So th uh, this is a really nice like height based uh, MN occlusion. You can use that to generate to re really good quality AO. So getting this uh, from, from normal normal to height. Uh, move to here and it looks like uh, too much of information I think yeah I just I just repeat open geo so right now I got a really nice I'll just keep this uh, AO here okay so it is a height value relief balance uh, intensity around 0.25 that is too low uh, make it like 0.5 that is good and I'm occlusion height depth is uh, maybe 0 0.05 yeah that gives a good good result from the AO now just mix this AO with this one um, blend node uh, we just multiply this with this. this here, this here. Use uh, multiply. So you can have, you can see this. Uh, so without without the AO mixed from the normal map, 
uh, you, the the air was like very very flat uh, because of the because of the white regions here. It it it, it didn't have much de details on it. So once we got the normal map, I mean, Amin Christian map from normals, you can see it is uh, it is more detailed. So let's name this group as uh, Abin Occlusion. Yeah. Move this slightly. Let's go picture. All of these here. I'll just name this as AO. Uh, AO. Okay. And uh, now we'll step on to removing the lighting from color. So this is a. Uh, this is a. This is the albedo we just picked from the texture. Okay. Uh, now first, first, first we need to remove the AO information. So it has a lot of emigration uh, information. You can't see it from here, but once we remove it, you will know it has to be really flat. So let's see. Um, AO removal, AO cancellation. So AO cancellation needs uh, needs color and AO. So let's get the emigration from here has really good details now right away you can see that it is like uh, taking away all the information of AO in it so here this is the default uh, bake and after you remove the amin occlusion you can see it like this so now it's already flat you can see all the details inside the shadow areas to look here had a lot of uh, you know dark shadows which were covering up the summer details so we look here is good now if you see there are a lot of uh, bright and dark areas so if this is bright it's dark that's because of the lighting information so so here we'll what we'll do is we'll first get uh, remove lighting no uh, lighting lighting cancel so we'll try both of these low frequency and high frequencies lighting cancel low frequencies so uh, I cannot say which one will be best, but we'll try. So let's try this. Right, right, right off the bat, see the difference it makes. So here, this is with uh, uh, with lighting and without lighting. So now it's almost uh, flat. The only problem is it is too bright at areas. So this is low frequency. Now let's try the high frequency. Keep it here. High frequency usually makes it a bit bit too too flat because it will remove all the details from it. So you can to get them back. If you check here, so it just removes all these bright spots and and, and makes it flat. So I don't want that to happen. So what I can do is um, adjust the intensity of the high. So bring it down a little bit and adjust the radius. It's all a kind of uh, trial and error. So this is better than the previous one. Still, there is a bit of uh, light, light, light information, but we can actually we can easily do that with uh, with further down the line. So this is color. Color will have more details on it. So color and connect this to. Here. You can see um, now it is like now our tree is like looking really good. Uh, so the problem with now is the roughness. So for roughness, uh, we don't we don't like we did not make any roughness map out of this. Okay. So what we can do is we can use the uh, color map mixed with the amin occlusion. Because for the for the for the deep areas like places here, it'll be a little bit more wet, but at the, at the sur surface it'll be mostly dry. Okay, look at the tree. Um, Whenever you can see this kind of kind of little bit of smoothness on on here, I mean it has to be opposite. So in the crevices, it'll be dry, but sur sur surface like wherever that is that is closely close to the um, um, close to the outer edge of the trunk it'll be more smooth so inside designer 
let's get that effect you can use curvature as well as well here a little bit because curvature has a lot of deep information so those places can be slightly wet so we'll keep the map there um, now first we will convert this to and run through an HSL just to get that remove that um, color so now it's like desaturated now I will blend this with a bit of uh, amin occlusion uh, bring the AO in I need a real gradient so the AO mixed in uh, and multiply so you got this okay so uh, it has to be like uh, now now reference is reference is like saying this this part is rough this part is not not rough so I need to invert this so now I will convert this into grayscale so grayscale, grayscale conversion grayscale now invert invert grayscale so that is now our roughness map so this is like this is these are deep areas and this is the outer area so this is deep deep deep, deep areas are rough and the surface is mostly smooth so just uh, use this roughness and connect this to here So now, now if you look, oh, it's pretty good. Now that trunk is like you can see that the bark has that nice, uh, you know, smooth surface on it. Now we have a lot of work to do on this, but this we can use as a test. So for the first pass, we should do. So we did. Um, so we imported all the all the geometry into designer we bake the uh, albedo normal um, curvature and AO information then we brought all the maps into this this designer graph then we uh, removed the AO and lighting information from from albedo and we brought roughness map into it and the rest will just keep, 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 keep as de 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 uh, default. You can even bring an amine occlusion, but right now uh, we will plug the amine occlusion separately in a separate channel inside uh, Unreal Engine. So for the AO, I will bring it as this here. Uh, it might be a little bit uh, too dark here, but we can adjust it in the in the engine. So yeah, that's pretty good. We run this uh, color map through a sharpen node just to get that final effect. So height we don't need for now. And delete it. Metallicity, man, metallic is black is good. Black is what we need. And uh, color has to be run through a sharpen node. Sharpen. So sharpen. Keep it as uh, really low. Maybe around uh, point three or something. And let's try how it looks. Mm, I don't know if point three is too, maybe too much. Uh, maybe put as point two five. Yeah, that's pretty good. Point point two five is good. Should not have any noise on it. Let's so say zoom out. Uh, that's good. Okay, and now let's export, export all the textures uh, from this. Curvature, I'm oh, sorry. Um, so curvature, keep it there for now. We will use it later, once we fine tune it. Now, export outputs. Uh, let me find out the location. Uh, tree stump, trees. Uh, we'll bring this, bring everything, every, every texture into, into here, okay? This is a final export folder. So, two vision target is fine. So we are on base, base, base color, normal, roughness, metallic, and make an Metallic we don't need. Okay, this is just a black. Export outputs. 
Uh, so right now we are exporting at 4K. So for the final resolution, we need to reduce that. We cannot have 4K for the final resolution. So I'm planning for 2K. So we have a material blend or material um, transform. That's all. So this actually has has just one uh, one node. Uh, we are not going to blend any materials. So uh, diffuse no, uh, base color true, normal true, specular no, closeness no, roughness yes, metallic uh, metallic we don't need, um, height no, AO yes. So just uh, bring in these to you. Normal roughness and uh, I mean occlusion. And then just change the size to uh, So final output is like 2048. 2048 we have input as um, 496. So that is perfect. Okay, save it and export outputs. Everything is good. Export done. Now we'll just bring this into Unreal and see how it is. So the Unreal editor. I uh, just keep this place as for just for the uh, put this in the tree. Current browser, uh, I got textures, vegetation, sorry, textures I, I can directly bring in, and um, import. Uh, tree bark. All, all, all to seven imported. Just save it. So under uh, meshes vegetation trees okay, there is no folder so new folder um, so what do you call this tree mm. this name is a wall tree oh we haven't explored anything that's that's why uh, okay, so this one I'll keep for for testing in Unreal for now. Uh, export. This is vegetation trees, wall tree. Just save it as uh, so. I'll save it as an F uh, FPX. Mm. And this is test. Get Unreal. Uh, just um, so, I, so in wall tree, input that tree in tree here. Content uh, meshes, vegetation, uh, trees, wall tree. So this is a test FPX. Import it. Do not create material. Import. Uh, so we don't have material so for, for, for this so far. So the uh, material, a new material. Mm. Wall tree box. So for this wall tree box, we'll keep it the same. I'm not going to change it. So in this material, okay, we tab here. So in the content drawer. The textures just get the tree. So this is tree. I mean inclusion. Uh, or purpose. Okay. All these thing here. So I'm just going to make a test material here. Uh, this is the base color. Mm. Like this. Roughness, normal, and then a question. 
Selim. Trees, one tree, open this. I played that material in there. But the scale might be off, so that's what I'm trying to take a look. Um, so, wall tree bark. That looks fine. Let's try and bring this tree into it. Unreal. So, this tree is right now is very, very small. So the textures are fine, everything's looking good. Uh, only thing is like the the scale. So I cannot use this tree for the wall right now because it is uh, it is too too small. So let's try scaling it up inside Max. So we just save it. Um, I have a mannequin, so we're gonna use to check the scale. Uh, back, go back, go back, go back. So I have a references here. Character references sizes. We'll try five to six scale man. Um, Board him here. Oh, the scale man is good. Hmm. And why was it looking too big, too small? This is fine. Oh, well, that's a big okay. So it is more small. So the tree it looks really small. It just killed up. So I'll make a copy of this because this is a low, low, low body mesh we, we use for baking. So just make a copy. Um, mesh for test. So okay. So scale it up, scale it up, scale it up. Maybe like this size should be good for the trunk. I think. Use the text form. Export again. <coughs> it's unreal. Just try re importing it. Yeah, that is uh, that is pretty good scale scale. Now let's try going into the play mode and see if it will uh, it will fit. Now going to play. Now let's try. Yeah, that is pretty good. It's good. I have a co collision problem with the rails. Because uh, it won't let me do it properly. Okay, that's a good tree. <laughs> if you want to make it uh, even even bigger, then it's fine. We can we can do it. It's unreal. Um, nothing is going to stop me from doing it. Now let's uh, bring this tree up there. Um, I, I might need a bigger scale, but I can scale it in Unreal. Uh, so let's bring the tree here. So this is where I'm trying to bring it. So the plan was somewhere around like this. So at this side. So if you look at the human scale, it is really huge. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just scale it up in Unreal. Uh, rotate it slightly. And check which roots are good. So maybe this side roots are better. Because it is more longer. Right this maybe. Now check for the player height. Yeah. That's I think that's pretty good. Yeah, there you go guys. So we made a we downloaded a tree from um, Mega Scans, uh, processed in 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 ZBrush, brought into Substance Designer. Then uh, we uh, removed the amino collision uh, information from the albedo, 
then we moved lighting lighting information from the uh, from, from the albedo then exported it then brought it into unreal and set up a simple material for the tree and there it is uh, next next part uh, i'll be i'll be showing how to uh, how to build the whole tree uh, inside speed tree exporting it with um, with the leaf animation and all and uh, and and we'll go from we'll go from go from there so for the, for the next part i might finish this uh, roots clinging onto the wall so seeing that the roots are almost like this size i could do about um, so this this part of the roots could come all the way down maybe up to here so that's what i'm planning so that is not bad actually so if we bring it to here like can i come to this side and below this ledge yeah okay thank you so much um watch this watch the video if you like the video sub sub uh, like it and subscribe it i'll be adding plenty of videos like the ue ue5 then um texturing in ue5 vertex painting and all those all sorts of stuff thank you so much guys bye